A surprising amount of people have Ouija boards just sitting in their closet somewhere collecting dust, and most people probably have never even used them. I found out what Ouija boards are when I was 16, and when I asked my parents if we had one in our house, my mom told me yes, she did have one buried somewhere in the closet with all the board games. That closet was in the basement by the laundry room, the small closet with a bunch of my parents' old stuff. I was intrigued to try using a Ouija board because I was slightly superstitious. I had my mom help me dig through this closet without disrupting the integrity and neatness of how she sorted everything in there. And lo and behold, eventually she finds this old dusty box that simply said Ouija and had two hands holding the piece that moves around the board called the planchette. The box was kind of falling apart on the edges, even though my mom said they'd only used it a couple times ever. The first thing I did was text a few of my friends to come use the Ouija board with me that weekend when I'd be home alone, to make it scarier. My friend Liam, who was 17, had a car, so he picked up my friend Jack and they came right over. It was like 9pm. It was dark out, obviously, and my parents were gone for a couple nights. My younger brother of two years, Adam, was also home, so I asked him to join as well. We were going to play on the floor in the loft, which was converted into my bedroom. We turned off the lights and then turned on a flashlight and put it on the floor in the corner of the room, pointed towards the board. All four of us sat on one side of the board and we held the planchette and started asking questions. None of us had ever done this before, so we asked basic questions. I said, if there's someone there, move the planchette. Then, for the first time, it started to move to the word yes. Adam asked, how old are you? And the planchette moved from the number 6 to 7, 67. We looked at each other, and while I suspected one of them were moving it, and I'm sure the others did too, we all played along and didn't break immersion. We took turns asking questions. Eventually, I asked the board, are you a demon? And the planchette went to the word yes. At this point, we all laughed and broke immersion, knowing one of us was messing around. At that moment, the flashlight turned off, and all of us stopped laughing and got really scared. Who did that? Someone asked. But it was clearly none of us. The flashlight was all the way in the corner. I crawled to get it and kept pressing the button. It wouldn't turn back on. I turned on my bedside lamp, and I saw the freaked out expressions on my friend's and brother's face. I said that was the most terrifying moment for the battery to die, but also part of me believed it wasn't a coincidence. We stopped playing after that moment, and we even left my room and went to the backyard just because we were all freaked out being in the house at that moment. I had to sleep in that room that night though, and when my friends left and Adam eventually went to sleep, I knew I had to as well. I put the Ouija board back in the box and brought it downstairs out of my room. I just felt weird sleeping in the same room as it that night. As soon as I turned off the light, I just tried to go to sleep right away, not sitting on my phone for an hour or whatever, like I usually do. As I was starting to finally drift off into a half-sleep state, something in my closet fell over. I immediately rose up and looked in the direction of the closet door. I flicked on the bedside lamp and walked over to the closet. It was a small walk-in closet where I kept some of my clothes. There's a light switch on the outside of the closet that turned on a single light bulb inside of it. I flicked it on and looked down at the crack at the bottom of the door. There were what looked to be two shadows cast by feet on the other side of the door. As soon as I saw this, I started screaming at him and ran to his room. I explained to him what I just saw and led him to my room to show him. When he came to my room, the light in the closet was still on, but the shadows at the bottom of the door weren't there anymore. I opened the door, and there was nobody in the closet, but there was something on the floor. It was a wooden box that I made in arts and crafts that I would put childhood memorabilia in. It somehow fell over and the contents spilled onto the floor. There is no draft in the world that would have knocked that over. It made no logical sense. I slept in my parents' bed that night and then the next, and for a week after that I slept in the spare bedroom. Eventually I would start sleeping in my own bed again, but I would never forget that night. I haven't touched a Ouija board since. I had never used a Ouija board until I was in my mid-twenties. It was never something that interested me. But my friend George was very briefly talking to this girl who was into that sort of thing. Her name was Mandy. She was into exploring abandoned and allegedly haunted places. One day he invited me to go with them and her friend to this apparently haunted abandoned house about a half hour drive away. 
He guaranteed me the friend was cute in order to entice me to go. I didn't have anything going on that night, so I said, why not? We would be doing this late at night. George picked me up first around 11 p.m., and then we drove to pick up the girls from this park. I had already met Mandy once, but not her friend. Her friend Carly had red hair, a nose ring, and sleeve on her right arm. Mandy had already been to this house before, and she said it was high in activity, a term I'd never heard till that point, but obviously could put together what she meant. I smiled a bit as she said it because I honestly laughed to myself. I don't believe in the paranormal myself, so I found it a little humorous. Mandy brought this big bag with her, so during the drive I asked what's inside. And then she goes and pulls out this box, a Ouija board box, and then she pulls out a candle. Then George said, oh, that's the surprise. Apparently her surprise to George was that we would be using a Ouija board in this abandoned house. I'm gonna be honest, that didn't sound super fun to me, but I was there for the adventure. Mandy directed George where to park when we got close. It was this really dark street with no street lights, with an open field on one side and trees on the other. The house driveway was gated off, so we had to walk from there. We walked through some woods that led us to the backyard of the house. From there, Mandy led us to the back window that she climbed through last time. It was a bit high up, so we had to help the girls up, and we just climbed in ourselves, and we walked around the house for a bit. All the furniture was still inside, but it was just decrepit. It hadn't been lived in for probably decades. I don't scare easily, and I must admit, being in there at night was very eerie. It would probably be terrifying alone. It was dead silent besides our footsteps on the creaky floors. There were some old portraits of people hung on the wall. They looked like they were taken in the 50s, which made me wonder how old this house was and what was the story behind it. Most likely the couple living there died and there was no family left to claim the house. Mandy set up the board on the floor and she lit these two candles. I could tell she was really into this stuff. She took lead with this, asking a bunch of spiritual questions. The planchette piece didn't move for the first few questions as she kept asking, is anyone there, can anyone hear, etc. Eventually, it started to spell out the word hello. I laughed and looked at George who laughed back. But the girls were serious and even said stop laughing. Out of respect, I did stop smiling and put a serious face on. Mandy asked, what's your name? And the planchette moved around the board slowly to spell out the name Gregory. She then asked, how long have you been dead? And then it moved around to spell out 30 years. I didn't believe any of this for a second. I knew Mandy or Carly were doing this. This went on for some time and we played along until there was a huge thump from upstairs in the house. We all jumped and let go of the planchette. George said, is someone up there? And Mandy insisted it could be Gregory. Mandy and Carly put their hands back on the planchette and asked, Gregory, did you make that sound? And George and I stopped her and said, we need to leave if someone's upstairs. Then we watched as the planchette moved to the word yes. At this point, George and I were convinced the girls were pranking us and that they had someone upstairs trying to scare us. Then we heard footsteps above us. There was no denying these sounds were footsteps. George and I agreed to go upstairs and check it out, expecting to find someone trying to prank us. The girls kept saying, no, come back down. We went up the extremely creaky steps and entered the first open door we found. It was a bedroom. The furniture and everything in the room was extremely decayed. And then there was this door right in the corner of the room, most likely a closet. It was cracked open and we whispered to each other that we thought we heard something in the closet. I put my finger up to my lips to tell him to be quiet and we listened. When we heard a clear exhale behind the door, we both quickly left the room. We hurried downstairs expecting to find the girls still in the living room, but they were gone. The candles, the Ouija board, everything. There was just darkness in the house now. We didn't even hear them sneak out. We left through the window again in a hurry and ran to the car. George tried calling Mandy's phone multiple times, but it went straight to voicemail every time. She blocked him. They were nowhere to be found either. We went straight to the car and drove home. George never heard from that girl again. He only hung out with her two times. He didn't know where she lived or anything. We did form our own crazy theory that they were in fact trying to trap us somehow and the footsteps upstairs were from somebody they knew. It's also possible they never left the house and that they were hiding somewhere inside. 
The more superstitious out there may believe that we did in fact speak to a spirit though, and something more supernatural was going on. In October of 2015, when I was a junior in high school, I was in my horror phase where I was obsessed with everything scary and supernatural. With Halloween coming up, I was also reading a lot of scary stories about Ouija boards and people's experiences with them. My curiosity was piqued, and so I ordered a Ouija board off Amazon. And when it arrived, I waited till a night our parents were not home to use it. I convinced my little sister to try it with me. We were at the dining room table with the lights dimmed, both of us holding the planchette. I asked the board some questions, and my sister and I both laughed because it was kind of awkward and funny. I started to move the piece around, trying to creep out my sister, but she knew it was me doing it. After a few minutes of doing this, we were starting to get bored and my sister wanted to stop. I said let's try for a few more minutes. After a little bit more waiting for the planchette to move from some unseen entity, we decided to give up. My sister went to her room after this and I went to mine. I looked up more Ouija board stories online and kept reading people's experiences with them, and then I looked up why it didn't work for us. Other people had said their first time using Ouija boards nothing had happened, so I decided I would try again. That night around 1am, when my sister was already asleep, I went back down to the dining room and dimmed the lights again. I once again tried to use the Ouija board, asking similar questions as a few hours ago, just in a lower voice to not wake up my sister. I held the planchette with both hands, waiting for it to move, but it never did. Instead, I heard sounds from upstairs, like soft footsteps. It could have been my sister. She might have heard me down here. The footstep type sounds were followed by a muffled female voice. It didn't sound quite like my sister though, and the voice was coming from directly above me. The room above the dining room was our older brother's room, who was away at college. My sister wouldn't have been in there. I went up the stairs quietly, and I heard the voice getting louder as I got closer to my brother's room. It was coming from in there. I was curious if my sister was playing a prank on me, changing her voice to sound lower to scare me. I got to the door and put my ear up against it. I heard the voice of what sounded like an older woman. I wasn't sure how my sister could be doing a voice like that. At first I didn't know what was being said until I realized that the voice kept saying, Grandma's here, Georgie, over and over. It was the voice of my dead grandma. I felt every hair in my body stand up. I opened the door and turned on the light, and no one was inside. The voice had stopped. I ran to my room and shut the door and locked it and curled up under the covers. I felt the whole room spinning as I couldn't form any rational thoughts of what just happened. It was too vivid to have imagined it. When I calmed down, I did a prayer before going to sleep. Or at least trying to go to sleep. I was awake all night. I still remember this night just as vividly eight years later.